so you've been saying that you have a really great driver mm -hmm. and after his hard work and, and efforts, he wanted a type of truck mm -hmm. and you being who you are, you want to make sure that you get him what he wants. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing here today? So uh, kind of uh, my thing as far as with the, the driver, so a company driver is once they start here, I kind of uh, put them in something obviously that's uh, reliable and running and, and we usually at some point discuss the truck they want. Now it's not always a new truck. I mean, we can get new trucks for sure. If that's something that the driver wants, but I usually leave it up to them whether they want something old, something new, something in the middle. And uh, this particular driver's a real great guy. I, I met him personally over at Walcott. Um, just a great guy. He's been with us for over six months now, I think pushing eight months. And at the six month mark, we started talking and said, hey, look, uh, what type of truck is the truck that you want to drive? He's in a Freightliner Cascadia that we have now. Good truck. Um, but the truck that he wanted to drive was a Kenworth. So we started talking. He wanted a W9, uh, W9L model, wanted a cap motor. We kind of talked about some years. Uh, we looked. And anyway, so this is the truck. It's a 2006 W900L. Uh, I think the color, we refer to it as jade or teal. Uh, beautiful colored truck. Uh, it's a used truck, obviously. 06, got a C15 A-cert cat engine in it, 18 speed. Um, the interior is dirty, but just kind of a quick glimpse of it. It's owner operator spec. I bought it from one owner. So sunroof, full gauges, uh, wood grain dash. Uh, again, that's getting detailed and stuff. Remember guys, you know, this is an 06, but this is uh, what he wanted. So I try to make sure that uh, the truck that they uh, want, I can, I can deliver on it. So anyway, we bought the truck. Uh, I bought it from a friend of mine. He bought it brand new. Uh, so the story with this truck is he's had it, you know, since new. He's drove it. It's got uh, over a million miles on it. Um, this was a Michigan truck. So there are things, especially when you live in the northern states like we do, Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, anything that basically they salt the roads like they're going out of style. So one thing with this truck is I was aware when I bought it, we discussed it. A uh, beautiful truck. Everything is, is pretty top notch on it as far as uh, uh, under structurally underneath the sleeper, but it had some cancer. So we're going to talk about the cancer. Um, underneath the fifth wheel, you can already see that there's some sections have been cut out and we're uh, kind of in the middle of it. But underneath the fifth wheel, we've obviously removed the fifth wheel, but underneath the fifth wheel, we have some rust jacking going on. And basically that's when two pieces of steel meet and rust gets in between them and they start almost jacking them apart. So you can kind of tell the frame's a little ripply on the top. Um, structurally, the top and the bottom are still fairly solid. You can see the thickness, but what wasn't solid is right underneath where the fifth wheel plates bolt, it started rusting pretty good. This is a bad section, as long as with a section right here that we're gonna cut completely out of the frame. Uh, I've got a piece of it. I'll show you. This is the piece right here. Uh, you can see, guys, these, these frames are damn near a quarter inch thick. Uh, but that is nowhere near that. So rust is just completely eaten away that piece of frame. Uh, it had a hole in it. That's what the hole is. That's just the section I cut out right here. Again, more is getting cut out. Um, so I'm going to kind of show you what we're doing. A little bit of a disclaimer is anytime you're messing with the frames on trucks, if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't have an experience with it, get a shop to do it. Get somebody experienced with this stuff. It's nothing to mess around with. These things haul a lot of weight. Uh, there's a lot of stuff riding in it, obviously the driver, the load, people around. So this is not something you want to play with if you haven't messed with it before. Hey, Chris. So what's going on today, brother? So uh, our, one of our trucks are down in another shop getting the transmission put in it. So uh, we just got the core back. So we're gonna take the core out of the pickup, take it over to our other shop and just sit it, either use parts off of it or scrap it eventually. This is an old trans off of uh, one of our trucks. It's an 06 Freightliner Century. Uh, this is a Eaton, I think it's referred to as a Super 10. Uh, but this is kind of a oddball one because it's a Super 10 Top 2, which means the Top 2 gears are automatic. I guess back in 06, that was the uh, newest, latest, and greatest thing. But 
it's basically a boat anchor. It's junk trans. Uh, the trans itself is good, but the computer was messing up, and we just took it out and swapped a straight 10 like you would have an average truck, you know, shifting uh, one through five and then get into the high range and go to the rest of the gear. So just take this off, unload it. Hey, uh, Reese, you want to grab the forklift? I'm not even using my mic. We're just going straight raw, baby. There you go, man. There you go. On today's episode of Jocelyn Transport, episode one. Old greasy shit in the old greasy shit. Where's the new guy? Here's the new addition. Yes, sir. The Jocelyn Transport team. So what are you doing, brother? Introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Reese Bemerick. I'm going to be the new mechanic here at Jocelyn Trucking. Uh, I'm only 18, so I'm still learning a lot. I'm going to school up the road for diesel mechanics. So uh, Chris over here said that, hey, you know, we got an open spot if you want to come in and learn something. So I'm going to try it out and see how it goes. The new guy. What's up? You want to run this forklift or what? You want to see your forklift skills? Come on now. I know you don't got that molar for no reason. Great, so we're gonna get Are you gonna do it for Dale Reese or what? I might as well do it for Dale, why not? Uh-huh. Alright. Right. Look at that! I'm doing everything from the mullet shot. There you go. I had a mullet for a while. I know. Uh, come up some. Okay. All right, now come in a little bit. Right there is good. Okay. Set your brake and just give me a few seconds. I'll get this together. Okay. Set. Here we go. Here we go. Come up real easy, Reese. So go ahead and go up with it easy. Yeah. Up, 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 up. Keep it coming. Keep it moving. Your little gas. Perfecto. All right, just slowly back out. Kid's doing okay, Chris. Doing good, doing good. So yeah, this is our other shop that we kind of just uh, keep a lot of the parts. Obviously, a lot of the trucks that are in their fleet are older, so it pays off to kind of have a stockpile of old stuff. It's uh, the way I kind of, I guess, explain it without calling myself a hoarder, but I do hoard a lot of old stuff, but it does come in handy when we need it, so. Jump on! Alright, let's go. Are you still filming? I'm always filming. Ah, great. Gotta get my beauty side. Right. It's just ugly on both sides. You're right. <laughs> hey, at least I know this. 
<laughs> nah, you don't look bad, you know. But I don't have my hey, glasses on. So everybody knows, I do know what I'm talking about because I have TA gloves. Oh my shit. And I wow. stayed at a holiday look at that. one time. Oh my, oh my Jesus. So that makes me probably like the best mechanic ever, I really think so. The last yeah. part, yes. Even though we use the hotel here, so I'm not sponsored by Mobile. Del I know, I was about to say. But if they want to give me free oil, I'll take it. I'll take it. I get you free oil for Otella. If you want it. So yeah, this is the, kind of the compound. A little bit of a, everything here. Everybody kind of has their own, uh, I guess, thing they're interested in. Some of them build rat rods. This guy races uh, legend cars and stuff like that over here. This guy cleans out trash bins. Uh, there's a landscape company in here. They do flooring. Uh, we do trucking. Guys transport inside. guys with mullets. Transport this guy. guy do yeah. it for Dale. What's wrong with transport guys with mullets? This is just Team America over here. It's <laughs> Team America. 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 Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah. Love. One of our trucks, uh, it's kind of common for up here in the north. Uh, I guess a lot of people deal with this in general. But uh, So this frame was rusted pretty good in the fifth wheel area, uh, up underneath the fifth wheel. Uh, when two pieces of metal meet and rust forms, it kind of creates something called rust jacking, which is bad in all instances for the, the truck itself and the uh, fifth wheel plate. So on this truck, we're fixing it right now. Uh, so obviously we're going to cut out the rust weld new section of the frame in and then on top of that we're also going to put a liner inside the frame so this section kind of looked like uh, this so you can see right here how thick the frame is now this is just a section we cut out so you can see how thin that is there was holes in it this is actually a piece of the frame so uh, you can see how much over time rust takes out of the structure of the frame so uh, we looked all over the truck, uh, basically from the drives up is in really good shape, and even in the drives is in good shape, but we are gonna do a cutoff, which means we're gonna cut it from pretty much here and put a whole new, uh, they refer to it as a cutoff, but new drives, axles, frame rails to the back. So everything will be updated to whatever we cutoff we get, whether it's a 2015 or 2016. Um, but we're not doing that as of yet because there's still a lot of structure and life left in this. So right now we're cutting out all the bad section, which the worst of it is, the, is right here. You can kind of see how thick it is up here. The thickness of this is kind of the same over there. It's, it's real thick until it gets right here, right underneath where the fifth wheel sat. And you can, you can kind of see, I don't know how well that'll tell on camera, that it droops down right there. So that means a lot of that frame is gone. So we're going to cut all the way until we get into good metal. So all this right here. And I have another section of frame. We're going to put that in its place, weld it all in, grind it down smooth so you know you won't be able to tell that section of the frame. And then on top of that, because we have been welding on the frame, um, I like to add a little bit more structure into it. So we're going to get something called a liner, which is a whole nother frame rail that sits inside of here. So this frame will be fixed. And then it'll have another complete frame rail that goes inside of here and bolts in between this cross member and in between this cross member. So whatever strength we took out right here by cutting out and welding and fixing is not only going to be fixed because we're putting a new piece there, but it's also going to have a whole other frame rail on top of this one from this cross member to this cross member. Now again, uh, the right way if you were going to keep this frame, the right way in my opinion, everybody does things a little different is to actually strip everything down. So if we were gonna keep this frame and never do a cutoff, I would take all the suspension off of it, leave the frame hanging, take all these cross members out, we'd sand everything smooth, fix the frame just like we're doing, and we'd put a hole liner in it, meaning all the way from underneath the cab to the very back of the truck down both sides. So you would essentially from the cab back have a double frame truck. I like the liners because for one, uh, they're a whole nother thickness of the frame. They bolt in and uh, it provides like that much strength on the inside and kind of uh, 
whatever whatever uh, strength has been taken out on the original frame rails, that liner kind of makes up for it plus some. So you still have the original frame rails, plus you have a whole nother liner on the inside. So, so you can you can kind of tell here. Um, so this is 379. Um, everything to about right here is a 379 frame. This is actually a 2016 or 17. I can't remember now. I think it's a 2016. Uh, Freightliner Cascadia cutoff. So that means everything from here back is 2016. So brakes, suspension, airlines, everything. And uh, obviously it, it was welded in the center. Uh, these frames are together, so it's one complete frame. And then inside here, you can kind of see, this is what you would call a liner. Um, so you see how there's a frame rail up here, there's a frame rail right here. It's just a whole section of liner. And this liner runs all the way back here throughout where it was cut all the way into the back of the sleeper. And uh, so you essentially have it double framed in this whole section. So this section is stronger than what it would be even if it was just a single frame rail. No, I appreciate because those that. liners are in there. No, so for all you mother truckers out here now, you know what the cutoff is about. You know, right. Because a lot of people don't know that. Like, why do people do it? Well, one is if you buy a truck with a lot of rust on it, mm -hmm. it's something that you might need to do. Right. So here's the number one question the internet has been asking you, Chris. When it's this long, is it more for uh, cosmetics fun, or is it uh, is it something that actually helps with the trucking business? Because I, I did read a lot of the comments in our last video, and people were like, damn, that's a long mm -hmm. bi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's long. Uh, so this is, I mean, I'm, I'm going to get a lot of uh, hate for it. But the honest answer is, the benefit of it is it does ride a little better. I'll give you that. It rides a little better. If you haul uh, open deck, meaning flatbed, step deck, RGN, and you overhang freight, it gives you the ability to overhang a lot more freight. That, to the, to the <laughs> sum it up, is about the advantage of it. Other than that, it's cosmetic, it's for looks. I think it looks cool. I've always wanted to have a long truck. I did it longer just because I like it. You know? I love it. How I, long is it total? Uh, so it's 325 inch wheelbase from the center of the drives to the steer axle. Uh, so when you measure wheelbases, it measures in between the drive to your front axle. Oh, is that how they measure it? Yep. All right. No, I learned something new. So there it is. So when they say how long it is, it's just from that middle. Yep. Center of your drives to the center of your steer axle, so the center of the hub. And it's 325 inch across. And uh, yeah, it's pain in the ass to get places. It's not practical. Uh, it's not easy, not easy to get into. I mean, I've been driving it long enough, so I. I know how to manipulate it and get it around. I don't have a problem with like getting into docks. Everybody says, ah, oh, you don't take that truck everywhere. I can promise you, I take this truck everywhere. Home depots, we, we do a, a lift gate service where we're in and out of stores. Walmarts, Home Depots, Myers, and uh, you've been in the Walmarts and yeah. Myers before. They're uh, tight parking lots. They've got a lot of curbs and this thing gets in and out of it uh, just fine. I mean, I, I work it. Not every day anymore. Uh, you know, I, I drive and work on the trucks also, so I'm not out there every single day. But every day that I'm driving, I'm driving this. Okay, flat, medium rare, no pages for you. Correct. Okay. So stick on stream, medium rare for you. Okay. Woo! Back. One more time. Bye. Hey, hey. Woo! -hoo. All right. Here we go. And yes, sir. Japanese cowboy. Ah! Woo! Okay, guys. Watch your work, Gabriel. Ready? And make it hot! Woo! Look at look at that.